morning, everybody. Thank you for joining this webinar in these difficult times. I appreciate your time and attention, and we're going to zip through a very high overview of what is currently happening at the federal level on the Emergency Family Medical Leave Act, the uh, paid sick time, just so you are aware of that act that will go in effect April 2nd, unless the president decides to move up that effective date. Then we'll uh, go through uh, guidance from the unemployment comp. And then I have some questions that were presented the last couple of days that I'll, I'll pick out a few to go through, and then I can answer your questions that you have today. So let's go to the okay. first slide, Eric. And let's right. talk. about the families first. Coronavirus Response Act, this is the act that Congress passed and the president signed just a couple days ago. It has two components. There's an emergency paid sick leave component and then the Emergency Family and Medical Leave Act. Both acts are going to be funded by Congress. It's my understanding that if you do need to pay these benefits, then uh, you're going to be able to get a credit through, I believe, your payroll account. Those regulations on how exactly that credit is going to work should be coming out very soon. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> go back one, Eric. I'm sorry. There's a lot of information on this <clears throat> slide. I certainly can provide people if they need to digest it uh, later, but you'll see six criteria for someone who would be qualified to receive emergency paid sick leave. It only applies to private employers with fewer than 500 employees. Um, so you'll see it's basically uh, for people who are been diagnosed, tested for COVID-19, experiencing symptoms, or even those that are caring for a son or daughter whose school or place of child care is closed or not available. Next slide. Oh, back. There we go. So paid right. sick leave, there it is. Uh, you get 80 hours if you're a full-time employee. And you'll see the calculation there for part-time. Essentially, it's supposed to last for two weeks. And then that's when the Emergency Family Medical Leave Act kicks in. Next slide. Again, this is a lot of information. It's a relatively complex act, but it, I'm going to break it down for you as easily as I can. After the first 10 days, which should be paid by the emergency sick leave, then a person, if they are off work because they have a minor child whose school or place of child care has been closed or is unavailable due to the coronavirus situation, uh, then they could qualify to receive payment under the Emergency Family mm -hmm. Medical Leave Act. Go to the next slide on that. talk about unemployment compensation changes. A few days ago, the Pennsylvania Office of Employment, Unemployment Compensation came out with some guidance on how employers can handle unemployment compensation claims. You'll see there are four criteria that the Unemployment Compensation Office will now consider in determining whether an employee is eligible for unemployment compensation. So the first one is especially critical uh, now because uh, the governor shut down restaurants, bars, and then yesterday afternoon he shut down a good, good many other employers. Uh, so unemployment comp obviously is saying that an employee is entitled to unemployment comp if the employer temporarily closes or goes out of business. 
furthermore, I've had a number of clients say that they have reduced hours. A person can qualify for unemployment comp if those reduced hours are because of COVID-19. If you have told an employee not to come to work because you believe that the employee is uh, has symptoms similar to COVID-19 or it has been exposed uh, and you don't want it to spread within your workplace, that also would be a qualifying event. And finally, if the employee has been told to quarantine or self-isolate under a government-recommended uh, information, then... Um, Obviously, that would be another means for an employee to qualify for unemployment compensation. A few other things that have happened with unemployment compensation, as you might know, typically there's a one week waiting period. If an employee qualifies for unemployment comp, they don't get paid the first week that they are off work. That has now been waived. Furthermore, as you might know, employees have to be able to prove to the unemployment compensation that they are looking for work. There is also a website that they need to register on at the career link, which is, uh, again, a basis for them to be looking for work. Those requirements have also been waived. And uh, we're still limited now to 26 weeks because I think the government is hopeful that this is a short-term uh, shutdown. So we have not seen an extended unemployment comp benefit like we did during the recession a decade ago. That is a, uh, an overview of what's, what has happened in the last two or three days on the federal level and at the state level. So I'm gonna pick out a few questions now that we got earlier. So there have been a number of questions about how this is going to affect your contribution rate if your employees are now filing for unemployment compensation. It most likely will affect your rate. It, there are seven factors that the unemployment compensation office takes into consideration in determining your yearly contribution rate. One of those factors is the number of claims and the amount of the claim. I cannot tell you how much your rate will go up, um, but I, I believe it will go up because of the, uh, the claims that will be hitting your account. We'll need to, uh, that, that is a yearly calculation that the office does. As you know, they typically will give you notice. They'll be giving you notice uh, of the calculation and what that change will be. I've also had questions about uh, how you can ensure that your workers are going to get unemployment compensation. You as an employer do not have any control over that process, except obviously to be truthful when you receive the questionnaire from the Office of uh, Employment Security. They will ask you why the employee is no longer working for you. You need to indicate that it's lack of work uh, because you've been shut down. Um, even if you have told the employee, you can't work here because you've tested positive or you're exhibiting signs, you should put that on the questionnaire and that certainly will help the employee with their application. There are a number of other factors that go into whether an employee is eligible for unemployment compensation separate and apart from just being out of work. And that's why it's difficult for you to ensure that they will qualify and receive unemployment compensation. They do have to have paid into the system. They have to have the number of required credit weeks. For example, in Pennsylvania, they have to have worked 18 credit weeks, earning at least $116 per week during the base year, which is for the last five quarters before they applied. Um, there could be other factors that you're not even aware of that might um, 
prevent them from receiving unemployment compensation. The best you can do is to be uh, obviously candid on the, the application or the, uh, the form you're gonna get from unemployment compensation. also received questions about whether a, an employee is eligible for unemployment compensation if they are still working for you, maybe in a part-time capacity. <laughs> that is possible in Pennsylvania. Uh, a claimant, uh, a worker who is not working for full hours can qualify for what's called a partial benefit. There is a calculation that the unemployment compensation office does in determining how much of a partial benefit the employee will receive. It's even possible that the employee could receive the full benefit even though the employee is still working for you. It's typically going to be very, very part-time, but it's, it's possible based on the criteria set by the unemployment compensation office. I think it's too difficult to go through the calculation over a webinar but you should encourage any employee who has reduced hours to apply for unemployment compensation. And hopefully they will qualify for a partial benefit credit if you wish for them to hopefully uh, remain somewhat whole with their, uh, with their money that's coming into their household because you're not able to have them work on a full-time basis. did receive a question about whether uh, if an employee now claims unemployment comp, is that a new case or would it be a reopened case? Typically, if an employee has initiated a claim in the last year and now they're off again because of this COVID-19 situation, then I think they would need to reopen that claim that would be the best way to do it. I think filing another initial claim might be um, complicated and confusing with the unemployment compensation office. The unemployment compensation offices are closed. They are available by phone and of course through the internet, which is frankly the best way for your employees to take care of their unemployment compensation. I think the phones are being overwhelmed at this point. It might be frustrating for them to get through. Received a question about um, whether an employer can give cash gifts uh, to help them with their unemployment compensation uh, to make sure that they're made whole, basically, because as you know, unemployment compensation typically doesn't pay 100% of what they were going to make for you if they were working full time. Um, no. I would, I would recommend not giving them gifts that are not run through the payroll uh, as an ability to compensate them. That would be considered taxable wages for the IRS. It also would be something that your employee would need to report to the unemployment compensation office and they would take it into consideration on whether that would affect their compensation benefit. Michael, if you wanted to answer any of the questions that are coming over through the chat too, we could go back and forth between what was submitted before and you know what people are submitting right now too. We turn to those. I see them popping up. Thank you. Sure, thanks. So we have an interesting question. Uh, how do we timely file? A response to a claim for unemployment compensation if we do not have access to the paperwork that comes to the closed business. Uh, that is uh, obviously a dilemma given the proclamation from the governor. Um, I, I believe that um, you should be able to check your mail, uh, especially when it's concerning benefits that are important to your employees. Um, I, 
don't know what most employers are doing right now with that, but you need some means of taking care of that. We're going to try to get some guidance further from the governor on his proclamation. They are the, the government is taking questions and trying to provide some additional guidance on how we're going to uh, go through this process the next hopefully for a period of time. So the paperwork can't come to you electronically at all. It has to come in paper format to the business. I have not seen anything yet from the unemployment compensation office that they're going to be sending it via email. We typically have the address on record for the employer and then sent by mail. But let me let me dwell on that while I'm taking these other questions and we'll we can circle back to that one. Part-time employees have access to unemployment compensation benefits. Yes, they do. It all goes into the calculation of their rate. If you're making less, you get less in unemployment comp. But yes, they do qualify and they should receive unemployment compensation. Someone would like to know uh, what is the highest weekly rate from uh, unemployment compensation. I believe the highest weekly rate is in the lower $500 range um, for the highest wage earners. And the, uh, the other question was, can we continue health insurance? That is governed by your health insurance plan. You would need to check with your broker or review your plan document if you have a copy of that, because uh, the plan will cover what you do with health insurance for employees who have been laid off. Some plans will allow you to have the employee remain on the plan for a short period of time, such as 30 or 60 days, which hopefully covers this period with this COVID-19 situation. Uh, other plans do not allow that at all, and uh, that would be either a COBRA situation where you would have to offer them insurance through COBRA, uh, or they would need to, if you don't have COBRA, or you're not uh, eligible for COBRA, then they would have to find insurance through the marketplace. Somebody commented and said that if businesses are temporarily closed because of the governor's proclamation, you can file for relief from charges and your tax rate will not be increased. Thank you for that information. Something we're going to continue to get guidance from the unemployment compensation. Someone asked, when can I file for unemployment comp? When your hours are reduced, you should file immediately, or if you're laid off, I would file immediately. If a business has only been open for a short period of time, such as six weeks, do employees qualify for unemployment compensation? Yes, it's possible, because if they had been employed with another employer before they started with the Current employer, and they would uh, qualify for unemployment compensation. It, unemployment compensation will pick up pick up multiple employers during that base year. about 1099 employees I believe you're talking about independent contractors yeah. uh, they are not employees they are independent contractors so they would not be entitled to unemployment compensation unless they're working for somebody else but if you have them performing services and the owner of the business file for unemployment comp if he has been included in the rate that has been being paid 
For all okay. questions, please use the chat feature. Thank you. All right, good question. Uh, if you are a sole proprietor, you qualify for unemployment compensation. If you have your business set up as a C corporation, S corporation, LLC, Nothing where you have deemed you as essentially the owner of the business as an employee of the company, and you registered with the unemployment compensation office, then yes, you can qualify for unemployment compensation. But sole proprietors are unfortunately not eligible to receive unemployment compensation. One of the benefits actually of setting up your business other than a sole proprietorship because you can deem yourself as an employee of that corporation LLC as corporation. I'm reading through the questions here, so sorry for the pause. Somebody wanted me to go deeper into this emergency paid sick leave back. Um, certainly can do that at the end of the presentation, but I wanted to go through some of these other questions. Michael, while you're reading it, I saw there were two questions about the webinar and the slides. We are recording this and we will be sending it out to participants after. Uh, you know, later on today after this uh, presentation. Um, back to some of the other questions I had from earlier. I'm going to ask if I'm trying to minimize hours of hourly employees, would they be better off if I laid them off so that their unemployment compensation is not compromised? Um, again, as I indicated earlier, they can qualify for a partial benefit if their hours have been reduced, or maybe even a full benefit if their hours have been reduced significantly. That will be a um, I don't believe it's going to compromise their unemployment comp because of that. They'll get the partial or they'll get the full if you lay them off completely. So that the, the government will try to make them close to whole. So another question come up about the waiting period. Maybe somebody joined later, but that waiting period has now been waived by Pennsylvania. I explain a little bit more about the benefits to employees who are laid off because we have closed, but the schools are also closed. In that situation, if you have laid off an employee because you have shut down either because of economics or because the governor told you to, then those employees would be entitled to unemployment compensation benefits. There's no added benefit because the schools are also closed. That would be the, the only benefit that I'm aware of at this time that uh, your laid off employees would be entitled to receive. So there's a question about whether there's a difference between what is called a layoff and a furlough. In unemployment compensation, there's not a distinction in the law about that. From my perspective, a furlough is a temporary layoff. So, for example, you'll tell your employees, because of the governor's order, uh, we're going to be shut down. I expect that we're going to be back up running again as soon as the governor lifts the order. So stay with me. I'll still have you on the payroll. Just going to wait this out and see how it goes. A layoff is to 
because of economic reasons or the proclamation saying we're laying everybody off. I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know if we're going to reopen. Um, this is open ended. I'll keep you uh, informed as much as I can about how we're going to handle this in the future. So it's more of an open ended, um, could be permanent layoff. It doesn't make any difference with work unemployment compensation if the person is not working and not receiving wages, then they can sign up and hopefully receive unemployment compensation. A couple questions about salaried employees and whether their uh, pay has been reduced, whether they would qualify for unemployment compensation. My recommendation is that you should encourage those salaried employees to apply for unemployment compensation to determine if they would be entitled to uh, a partial benefit. And let the state um, handle the application and determine eligibility. Henry, we require an employee to use all paid time off prior to getting unemployment compensation. Good question. It depends uh, currently on your handbook on how you handle paid time off. And uh, however, you have the ability as an employer to modify your handbook policies on paid, paid, on paid time off at any time. So if you wish to have your employees use all pay time off, you can go ahead and tell them that. Go ahead and take your pay time off. I'm forcing you to take it. What will happen is regarding the timing, uh, if they're off and you're paying them, let's say a week of pay time off that they have accrued, the employee and you will need to report Report that payment to the unemployment compensation office when the employee applies for benefits. Again, you're going to get uh, a questionnaire. The employee will have the internet claim to, uh, to complete. There will be a question regarding that, and that's where you have to indicate yes, I am getting paid time off. Unemployment compensation will then take that into consideration in determining uh, eligibility and the benefit rate that will be paid. You can also, if you feel like you have cash flow problems uh, currently because of the situation, suspend the use of paid time off. So for example, you can, if somebody has a week of paid time off, you lay them off, you can say, look, as an employer, I am suspending payment of paid time off. Go ahead and sign up for the unemployment compensation. The one week waiting period has been Wage, so you're going to get your money as uh, as quickly as it can be processed. I understand the unemployment compensation office is trying their best to process these claims. I'm still hearing it's going to take two to three weeks for checks to start flowing into their uh, checking account. But that's one way you you can handle it too as an employer. An employee refused to allow any pay time off to be earned during a layoff. Yes, you are allowed to do that. Hopefully you have that in a handbook already, but if not, you should notify your employees that uh, they will not be accruing pay time off during a layoff. Hire seasonal seasonal employees. If we delay their fallback, will their benefits be extended? Uh, again, right now the the limit is 26 weeks. That could be extended extended at some point if the federal government or if the state government decides to change that law. So at this point, we have 26 weeks of unemployment comp. If you extend their layoff time. Beyond 26 weeks, they that would they would not be uh, entitled to any further unemployment compensation. So 
because not contesting an employee's UC claim, not returning the physical questionnaire sent to the employer, will it delay the employee's receipt of benefits? No, I don't believe it will. So if you're having problems accessing your uh, questionnaire and you can't get it in on time, I do not believe situation will uh, cause that to delay the employee's receipt of benefits. Do you think we can get the state to move to an electronic communication with employers instead of mail to keep funds to laid off employees moving faster? Uh, I will tell you that the information on the COVID-19 situation changes by the hour, it seems. So that is a possibility. They may have even started that process uh, while we're speaking here this morning. Um, but there is, um, that, that could be something that the UC office is going to try to implement, especially if we need to have this shutdown. I would encourage you to frequently check the unemployment compensation website. It's a very good website. They do have a special page devoted to the COVID-19 situation. They have not only just information, but they also have it in a, in a frequently asked question format that I think uh, would be very beneficial to you. So keep checking that daily to find out what is happening and what new information is, is coming from our government about the situation with unemployment comp. Can individuals who receive Social Security still receive UC benefits? Um, well, we lawyers think we know everything, but that one I, I don't know the answer to. So I will um, do my best to try to find that answer. I'm not going to be able to do it during this web webinar, but I've never had that question asked of me before. So you're a winner for that. You stumped me. And uh, I, will, I will circle back with hope uh, and try to answer that question. If there's a way we're going to have these slides and information given to you, we'll see if we can put that into the packet. I will, I will tell you, just as I told Hope yesterday when we were preparing for this webinar, that this is a very fluid situation Laws are changing frequently, regulations are changing or are being implemented. So what we are talking about today and what I am sharing with you may change by the end of today. Please keep uh, abreast of the news. Uh, please again, check that unemployment compensation website as frequently as you can uh, to keep up to date with things that are happening. Someone is having trouble faxing the forms back to the UC service centers. Do employers have other options um, to get the documentation to the UC service center? Yes, you can email it. I know it contains confidential information and that is a risk anytime you send that through the internet. But that is one option and uh, the mail is still an option also. appear that the UC Center will not accept the company's secure email. Um, again, I'm hoping that the UC Centers will try to make this internet uh, more user friendly because of the number of claims that will be coming through and the inability of some businesses to get to their mail. Is there a maximum number of hours that our employees 
to not go over so they can still get unemployment compensation. That is difficult to determine because of the calculations that the unemployment compensation office uses to determine if they're entitled to a partial benefit, how much that partial benefit would be. So I, I wish I could be more specific, but it really depends on that particular employee situation regarding their benefit rate. Uh, the unemployment compensation uses a 30% calculation on a benefit rate and then to determine the partial rate. Those calculations you can find on the website if you want to try to figure out a specific employee situation. Are full-time students under 18 eligible for unemployment compensation? I guess that was a question asked uh, the last couple of days and the answer is, is yes, they are if you're an employee, you've been paying work uh, unemployment comp insurance, uh, they're, they're registered, they should qualify for unemployment compensation if, again, they meet all the other eligibility requirements. That sometimes is a problem for students because if they're only working infrequently, they might not have paid in uh, for the required number of weeks. Companies are allegedly paying employees daily relief money based off the employee's average hours. And that this money doesn't affect unemployment compensation. I would not recommend doing that. If you do, it needs to be reported. I am concerned about this off the record, off payroll, gift, relief money, However you want to describe it to help your employees. Um, I'm not seeing any guidance yet from unemployment comp that that's going to be permitted. And I think that's going to be, as I said earlier, considered taxable wages, not only for the IRS, but it's something that the unemployment compensation is one will want to know about in terms of determining the benefit rate. If an employee refuses to show up for work, do they qualify for unemployment compensation? They are not sick. They just appear to want to get unemployment compensation. If you, uh, that's going to be a tricky question because I'm not sure of the situation. If they refuse, to, if you are open and you're running a restaurant and you you have your your takeout business still running, this employee was scheduled to work for you, they don't want to work, they may not qualify for unemployment compensation. That would be a voluntary quit. So under unemployment compensation, the employee would have to show that they quit for necessitous and compelling reasons. It's possible with this COVID-19 situation that they could make a case to the referee uh, that they had something going on at home, child care, uh, that they couldn't show up for work. Uh, but again, typically they want to see that the employee made some good faith effort to work out the situation with the employer before just not showing up for work. Uh, so it's a long answer to say it depends. But that might be one you should fight at the unemployment comp office if you believe that they just wanted to get UC benefits when you had work available for them. What if an employee is a diabetic and requests the time off without pay due to being a high risk person for the COVID-19 virus? 
the employer approved it, but without pay, are they eligible for unemployment compensation? Uh, it's possible that they are going to uh, qualify for unemployment compensation. that situation. That's one of those gray areas that I think even unemployment compensation is, is, is struggling with in terms of especially people with compromised immune situations and whether they are going to be self-quarantined because of that situation. I believe it would be a qualifying event for unemployment compensation. I would encourage an employee if they have that situation that they should sign up for um, unemployment comp and have it processed. Good question about ending unemployment comp. If we rehire the employee before the 26 weeks are up and they refuse to come back to work, how can unemployment compensation be stopped or will they continue to receive unemployment compensation benefits? If you offer work and they refuse to come back to work, my recommendation is to notify Unemployment Compensation Service Center about the situation. And uh, they are the ones that will need to make the determination. Um, it's, it's difficult process, I will tell you from my experience. And uh, especially if it's close to the 26 weeks, sometimes what happens is unemployment comp will pay out the rest of it while they process that information you provided. And um, they will either that's a credit if they think the, uh, the claimant was not entitled to the remaining weeks of unemployment comp. They can either have the claimant pay it back or it's just put as a credit on their record. But yeah, that's a very difficult situation and frustrating one for employers. And it's, it's been difficult to stop unemployment compensation in those kind of situations. question about um, are we or the employees better off giving each of our full-time employees a few days of work or is it better to keep one on full-time and lay off the others completely? Good question and that is a, a business decision that you will need to make in looking at your staffing requirements. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference on your unemployment compensation rate. Because again, if they're, they have reduced hours, they would be entitled to a partial rate. Those that are full laid off full time would be entitled to the full rate. So again, I, I, I would defer back to your best business judgment on that one. employee wants to give their hours to another employee who is not getting hours, would they be eligible for unemployment compensation benefits, job sharing type situation? Uh, first of all, I believe as an employer, you should be aware of what is happening. And if you as the employer approve of the job sharing situation, then that person would be entitled to unemployment compensation, the one who gave up the hours, because you as the employer have agreed to the job sharing situation. I would not condone employees doing that on their own without having you approving it. That's not a good practice.
Michael, there was a question about servers and bartenders and how they would be compensated. Um, I, I don't know if you could speak to that. Maybe it's based on the hours or how they're paid. Might be stating. Yeah, I saw that. I wasn't sure what. I wasn't sure about the question. Servers or bartenders? How would they be compensated? Um, if the question is how are what amount of unemployment compensation they will receive um, based on um, based on their income, they sh they should be doing those calculations and submitting that information to the UC. Um, I'm not exactly sure that benefit rate will be calculated with servers and bartenders but it, it can be done they need to apply and they need to let the unemployment compensation office uh, handle the calculation on that but the question is more of how are they going to be compensated by you as an employer and that is again based on current law regarding how, how servers and bartenders are paid based on the Federal the Fair Labor Standards Act and uh, the Pennsylvania minimum wage and, and overtime laws. Those are, those are still in effect. They haven't gone away. We'll need to abide by it. Somebody asked if uh, somebody doesn't have a bank account for direct deposit, will a paper check be issued? My understanding is that the UC office will issue a um, credit card, like a, one of those Visa cash cards. Uh, I don't believe unemployment comp will be issuing paper checks. Does an employer have to inform of the layoff in writing or is a phone call to the employees okay? That's a phone call will be fine. Again, there are a number of questions about calculations and first of all they're, they're difficult to explain verbally over the uh, web uh, webinar like this um, and I, so again I would suggest if you have questions about calculations that you might want to look at the unemployment compensation website and Review it for yourself when you have time to do it. Uh, also, it, it, it's really out of your hands in terms of the calculations regarding what will be the benefit rate paid to your employees. Uh, your job is to report basic information to the UC office, and then they will do all the calculations on their end based on figures and numbers that they have. They will give you, first of all, a financial benefit form that will tell you what they deem to be the benefit rate for that particular employee. If you disagree with it, or even the employee disagrees with it, they uh, you have a right to appeal that or challenge it. And uh, then, of course, the next step would be the initial determination, where the UC Service Center makes a determination whether the person is eligible or not will tell you what week that they are eligible to receive unemployment compensation benefits. It looks like there were a few more questions about that, you know, hourly and declared tips. Uh, you know, if it's distributed through the paycheck, are they included as income? I, I think that's what you had said was the way they calculated it. 
like what they're in. I believe so. Um, and that's something that the Unemployment Compensation Service Center is going to determine. I believe some of you, maybe, I'm not sure if you're asking as an employee or you're asking as an employer and you're trying to figure out what exactly the benefit rate will be for your employees. I'm sure they have questions and they might be asking you, well, how much am I going to get an unemployment comp? How am I going to pay my bills? Can you help me out? I would say to them that it's difficult for you to determine that. There are a number of factors that go into that calculation and that they should go ahead, sign up, an unemployment comp will, again, tell them what their financial determination is and, um, and whether they're eligible or not. Um, I think it's going to be difficult for you to try to predict exactly how much their benefit rate will be. And it might, frankly, be difficult for you to determine whether they're going to be eligible. I would not overpromise your employees that they're going to be getting unemployment compensation. As I said earlier, even if you're shut down and you have no work for the people and you have laid them off, there may be other reasons why they might not get unemployment compensation. They haven't worked long enough. They, haven't, uh, they might have a credit from an overpayment on a prior unemployment compensation claim that you're not aware of that it's going to be assessed against them. So uh, it, it's difficult from an employer standpoint because you don't control processing of the claims like you do with your payroll. And you can tell an employee exactly what their net amount will be each week. In this case, uh, you are uh, somewhat at the mercy of the UC Service Center in terms of the processing of the employee's uh, claims and also the, the benefit. Social Security, but have paid into unemployment comp. Is are you able to sign up? Yes, I I think I tried to answer that question earlier and said that whoever posed that question uh, in writing uh, that they had stumped me, and I would I'm going to admit that that I have never I haven't been posed with that question before. Um, and I, so I am not sure. My best to get my my best recommendation is sign up. Uh, again, this is a government benefit that's run by the government. If you believe that you might be entitled, or your employees might be entitled to unemployment compensation, they need to sign up. It doesn't cost anything, and the UC service centers will provide you with information to let you know how they're handling it. We are a seasonal business. How does UC work for staff that just started back to work on March 7th and not working as of last Sunday due to COVID-19? Um, your employees should reopen their claim. If, if So if they have received unemployment compensation during the winter, and now they're off again because of COVID-19, I would encourage them to reopen their claim with unemployment compensation because of this situation. If they are a new employee that just started with you and only worked a few days, again, they should go ahead and apply, especially if they had been working for another employer before they came on with you a week or two ago. They, because if they paid in even through other employers and have qualified uh, on, on the other factors, then they might receive unemployment compensation. This one asked uh, or said maybe a dumb question, but I don't think it is a dumb question at all. It's a very realistic question. What happens if the UC gets so backed up and how will they keep up with probably almost everyone that is filing? 
we had this issue come up during the recession and it wasn't handled very well. UC office got extremely backlogged with claims and there was a delay getting checks out to people who were unemployed. It could very well happen again, especially with the governor shutting down everybody. I think they are going to be overwhelmed. I think you can tell your employees that most likely it's going to take longer than the UC service centers are telling you that they will get their money. The silver lining is that the one week waiting period has been waived. So when they start getting their benefits, at least they're going to get all of it, not be uh, out at least one week. So I have a follow up to the seasonal business question. The employees don't receive unemployment comp in the winter, they work other jobs. In that situation, I would encourage the employees to sign up for unemployment compensation if they are not working as of last Sunday due to the COVID-19 situation. They may uh, be entitled to unemployment compensation, especially if they've been working other jobs during the winter time. Hey, Eric, can we, can we go back one slide on the unemployment, this uh, presentation? Is that again? Can we go back one slide? The back one, okay. Okay, I, uh, as we get close to the hour mark here, uh, once again, <clears throat> show you the slide that summarizes what we saw from the unemployment compensation office uh, two days ago, day and a half ago. And this gives you an idea of who may qualify for unemployment compensation because of the COVID-19 outbreak. Somebody asked uh, earlier if somebody had diabetes and has an compromised immune situation and they can't work because of that or don't want to work because of that, can they get unemployment compensation? Um, I think that situation might fall under the fourth bullet point. The employee has been told to quarantine or self-isolate um, or live or work in a county under government recommended mitigation efforts. Frankly, we're a statewide now with mitigation efforts. So I believe in that situation, given what we're hearing from the CDC, from our own Department of Health, uh, I think that person, again, would have a good opportunity of uh, receiving unemployment compensation benefits. So we are about an hour. I'm willing to stay on a little longer, hope if you want me to. Um, and if not, then, um, can figure out how to handle the rest of the questions that might be coming in. Um, I mean, uh, we can definitely, uh, you know, if you want to answer one or two more questions, and then we can, um, then we did, we have a coronavirus um, resources page where they can submit questions. Um, but, you know.